In this video, we are going to show you how to get from this to this. Likeies! In this video, I'm going to show you how to strip the paint from your miniatures. Snakeworks! Greetings hobby and mini painting fans. My name's Marcel and this is Snakeworks Studio where it's our mission to help you, just you there, oh and you, explore the hobby. So today we're discussing how to strip miniatures and we are not unfortunately referring to their clothes. That's something I like to do in the evenings, sometimes in the mornings. Anyway, that's my old job. What we're actually referring to is removing the paint or stripping, uh, which involves a few different processes you can use to take the paint away and have a as new miniature. Well, I say as new, it's more like 90% of the way there. You can get them nearly as new, but that requires a little more work. The reasons for stripping miniatures are... What are the reasons? Why would you even strip a miniature? To save money perhaps. You might, uh, you can save a fair bit of money by stripping your miniatures. You don't have to go out and buy more miniatures if you're not happy with your original miniatures. Put on a bit of weight since the wedding. Sit in my chin. We need to do something about that. ASAP. Now the guide I'm going to show you is for is for plastic miniatures only. It might work on metal, however it does weird things to resin, such as make it soft and rubbery, and no one wants that. So without, what was I doing with my eye there? So without further ado, let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so stripping miniatures. This is something I myself have only recently got into, but it's saved me a fair few pennies over the years, I think. There are lots of reasons to strip a miniature. A cocked up paint job, some eBay rescues perhaps, or maybe even changed your mind on a paint scheme. We've all done it, and we've certainly all been there. I'm known for changing my mind every week with Space Marine schemes. You can strip pretty much any miniature. Here are a few examples taken from my pile of shame. We have some Space Marines to strip. We have some more Space Marines. Some are blue, some are white, and some are disgusting, like this thing. I have no idea what's going on there. We also have a Thunderhawk gunship which was going to be from the Night Lord's Legion, but I'm not happy with it. Don't ask. Some Adeptus Titanicus Knights that have waited so long to be sorted out, they have accumulated more dust than Dusty Bin's guts. Ten internet cookies, if you can remember Dusty Bin. We also have Lehman Russ, Primarch of the Space Wolves. And yes, that's a genuine Lehman Russ. It's a very old miniature, but something we will work on another day. And a Shopkin. I'm not sure why that's in there. Ignore the Shopkin. Anyway, all of these miniatures need stripping. For the purposes of this video, we are going to take the squad of five Mark III Space Marines. These Marines come from the Prospero boxed set. Now that was a good one. So first of all, we are going to need our victims, sorry, models. In this case, like we said, five Space Marines. You will also need a tub to be your stripping bath, as it were. I like to use these food safe containers. They seem to hold the stripping fluid better. Cheap tubs might melt. It might not, but I know the food safe ones don't. This is a nice one, the lid actually clips on. It's a TML kitchen crazy click and seal. I'm not sure what's so crazy about it, but I do like the look of that sandwich on there. It's making me hungry. This tub is two litres. 
and I'm sure if you wanted to strip something big like a tank maybe, you could get an even bigger one. But bear in mind, it's going to need some more stripping agent to fill it up. The next tool we shall require is a toothbrush of the tooth brushing variety. Try to get one with stiff bristles rather than the soft ones. They might work, but I've not tried one. This one is a Colgate brush. It was pretty cheap, a couple of quid I guess. Don't steal your partner's or anyone else's toothbrush for that matter. They may not appreciate it. You can see all the filth on the neck of this one from some previous stripping engagements. I've had it a while and it hasn't needed replacing yet. Here's something you might not have expected to see on the list. Toothpicks. I use the wooden ones that come in a big pack. I'm not sure there is another type, but you do want these wooden ones. You only need a couple. I have three here, just in case. You can see some super glue on one from something else I've done. I have no idea what I was doing with that, but we probably shouldn't use that one, eh? Okay, a big important safety tip here, guys. Get some gloves. Now, let me tell you, I've tried a lot of different type of gloves. The ones from my previous stripping video were so bad that they melted and leaked. Not good. So I went down to Tesco and grabbed a pair of these nice latex marigold jobs. I recommend always buying a bigger size than you actually need. They can be really tight. You don't want to be struggling squeezing your fingers in when you can just get bigger ones. Your hands also can sweat quite a bit in these and smell a little funny. But better sweat than rot though. My size is eight and a half and I think that's known as a large. My hands are a bit fat though. Again, a couple of quid for a pack and have lasted me a long, long time. A very good investment, I reckon. Next up is some stripping agent. In this video, I'm recommending Meths. Meths is this really nice purple colour. It's nice to have around just to make your work area look good. This one is from the Bird brand and comes in pots of around half a litre or 500 millilitres. I'm sure you guys can find something similar about in any DIY store. The exact name for this one is Methylated Spirit, which is a CDA or completely denatured alcohol. This one uses the finest quality ingredients apparently, and as Gerard Butler once said, we'll put that name to the test. I think my accent was a little off there. Be very careful with this stuff. It's highly flammable and poisonous AF. One more thing you're going to need is some elbow grease. I've a little of this left over from my previous jobs. I've been saving it for this. Okay, so we have the tools and we have the talent. Let's strip. So really, I would recommend covering your work area. When you get that brush going, this stuff can flick about everywhere and ruin all your nice surfaces, so don't be doing it on the bonnet of your Ferrari or anything. I grabbed a bit of paper from a big roll I bought from Hobbycraft. It can come in handy for all sorts. This time, some protection. Cut it to fit and attach it to your work area. I tried to cover some of the wall as well. I've used sellotape to stick it down so it doesn't fold up when I'm working. There's nothing more annoying than when they do that. So put your tub on your work area, take the lid off and tip your meths in. Don't overfill it. Always go about halfway up the side and only add more if need be. You don't want this stuff displacing all over your work area. It melts things and it stinks. The next thing we're going to do is put our minis in the stripping bath. Make sure at this point you're absolutely 100% sure you want to go ahead with the strip as there's no coming back. It's time to wave and say goodbye to the old paint schemes. Goodbye. Now put the lid back on, quickly, before the vapours and stink gets out. I like to give the pot a little shuffle and wiggle around just to get things going. It probably does very little, if anything at all. Now, you can get the miniatures out pretty quickly, in say 10 minutes or so, as it starts to work quite fast. But 
I find best practice is to leave them overnight. So go and have a sleep and come back the next day. Hello there. I do apologize for interrupting your viewing pleasure, but if you're enjoying the video, please consider liking this video and subscribing. That means you, David. I see you sitting there. Now, some people advocate the use of a sonic cleaner, and sadly, I don't have one of those yet to show you, but we do have the next best thing. The most unstable washing machine known to mortal men. This thing shakes the whole house. I put the stripping tub on the counter above it. We turn the washing machine on. And then wait for the super powered vibrating spin cycle. My neighbour said it sounds a little like a train is going through the middle of the house. I think it has a wobbly leg or something, but we're moving soon so it can wait. So our miniatures have been in the bath overnight and had a little jiggle around courtesy of the washing machine. Now it's time to use the old elbow grease. Grab your toothbrush and get scrubbing. Make sure you're wearing your gloves at this point. Here we can see why we are using protective covers on our surroundings. The little bits of paint can flick off all around the room, and you should probably wear eye protection too here, to be honest. I like to work around the marine in a systemic fashion. I scrub the head, then the torso, then the legs, arms, and finally the backpack and weapon. You can give the marine a dunk occasionally to take any flaky scrubbings off and then see where you want to go from there. Repeat as necessary. If you find that you have paint in a few nooks and crannies that refuse to move, now is the time for our toothpick. Stick it in the little holes and corners and have a poke about. It will get most of those bits off. Sometimes what it does is it gets the paint to lift a little, allowing the stripping fluid to work its way further in, making it peel away a little easier. Now, I'm not after perfectly clean miniatures, and for me, this is enough. But if you want them sparkling clean, just like new, Put them in the bath and repeat the process as many times as you like. Bear in mind though, sometimes the paint stains the plastic, giving it a different look, even though there's nothing physical on the surface. One round of stripping will do around 80 to 90% of the strip, and each subsequent stripping process will get you diminishing returns, so I wouldn't bother personally with any more than two or three cycles. So with our minis out of the stripping bath, we can proceed and check out all that scum and flicked off paint everywhere. It's a good job we covered our work surface, eh? We can now rinse them off with clean water. I just take the whole lot to the sink and rinse them under the tap. However, some miniatures might be in small parts and there's always a chance the part might end up down the plug hole. So there's an argument just to have a tub of clean water to rinse in instead. It's up to you. Now, leave the miniatures to dry. A hairdryer can help with this if you're in a hurry, but I tend again to put them on a piece of tissue or something and leave them overnight. Then Bob's your mother's uncle and the mini is stripped and ready for its new coat of paint. You can see the varying results of the strip on all of these different miniatures. Amusingly, the super glued on stones didn't budge at all. So that will save me some basing work in future. Some miniatures still have a few bits of paint left in the corners and recesses, such as the bolt gun barrel and magazine and there's always usually a bit of paint left up under the arms or the backpack, places where it's normally hard to get your paintbrush. Also, places no one's ever going to notice. But to me, for what I'm going to use them for, this will be fine to reprime and paint now. If I did want a more as new surface, I would repeat the stripping process one or two times more, like I said before. So there we go, that's the strip. I can now paint these marines up as another chapter, just 
to be stripped again in the near future. So there you have it, my little guide on how to strip plastic miniatures. What did you think of that? Have you tried stripping your plastic miniatures? What miniatures have you attempted to strip in your hobby career? Do you think you save money by stripping your miniatures? Do you use a small stripping bath or do you have a massive pot? Do you use an ultrasonic cleaner or like me do you have the most unstable washing machine known to mortal men? Now my results I am actually quite happy with. I can go forward and use those minis in the future for other projects. Back in the day when I was stripping miniatures, I used to use Dettol. I don't have any of that laying about. I thought I did, but I don't. But it left a weird residue. It was really sticky and it would cover things and you couldn't wash it off very well. Wash it off, I sound like a fool there. Wash it off very well. It wasn't nice stuff. You can use it on bread. I be sharing a party. You can use it on resin miniatures though. My singing's getting better, I think. There's something else doing the rounds at the moment called a bio strip, and I have to admit, I haven't yet ventured into the world of bio strip. It sounds like some sort of tyranid product. One day we shall have a look at that, but it is not this day. Oh no. Also, that's going to cost money, and I'm going to get a cat. I'll play the cake with cheap I'm going to guess it costs a little bit more than my bird brand, Methylated Spirit. This is about one pound. One pound. Sassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassassass